wonderful evening to Awao Suleiman. Another wonderful evening to Kwesi Mayele Apia. And of course, our own good friend, Mohamed Kudus. Back again! Yeah! Good evening, Ghana. It feels good to be here. Sports Panorama, live and airborne on City 97.3. New Le Waba. Tonight, we won't be beating about the bush. It's straight to the point. Yeah, child, I'm giving props to Kwesi Apia today. Big guy. Chef Mayele. Boss Mayele. Chief Mayele. <laughs> today, Nathan will explain where the name Mayele came from. Hey, Kwesi Apia! The South African head coach has admitted that he was tactically Outwitted by Kwesia Pia. Hey, Charlie Rhyme. Admitted and outwitted. Charlie Aspode. <laughs> yeah. Charlie, big shout outs to Mr. New Money, the guy with the punk. He's not in the studio with us today. He's taking my place. Daniel Cranting, wherever you are, keep it up wherever you are. And to introduce the man, or to say a shout out to the man, he's not here today in the studio with us, but still, he will do the opening prayer, and then he will join us over the phone. Coach Christopher Nimli, of course, will be a part of the show, whether he is here in the flesh, in the spirit, or whatever it is, he will be a part of the show. And then the man... Who is fast gaining a reputation? Hotter than most of our rappers. Hotter. Yeah, hot. Who the man? The lyricist. Pianist. Journalist. International relations analyst. You know who I'm talking about already. Steph Curry's adopted brother. Nathan Kwao is here. What do you do, boss? Yeah, what's popping, man? What's I popping? know, I know. <laughs> I mean, it feels good to be back in the building. I mean, it's not like back in the days in, on the East Coast, but you know how it is. You know, I had to, I had to revive a few of my brothers from back in the day. I had to speak to Warren G before I entered the studio. Hold on. Ice Cube, hold, Ice Cube hold was hold holding on. my 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 work hold, notes. Hold on. Oh, Bocho. Bocho, why are you doing <laughs> <laughs> Bocho in Kegbe is here too. Thank you, Tahiru. You let me, let, let me tell you. Your, your microphone is even off. You can't tell me what I can do and can't do. I wasn't here. You were busy launching names for me. The disrespect. You, thank you, Tahiru. Bocho in Kegbe has been added to your resume. A.K.A. Kofinsia, <laughs> A.K.A. Tumu John Snow, <laughs> A.K.A. Gordon, <laughs> A.K.A. Agnes Boache. <laughs> Charlie, Agi, how was, how was Cape Coast? I don't, I don't no, I understand. Can you, you, can you explain uh, to me? Hold uh, on. Uh, no, wait. Can you wait, explain wait, to all of us wait. how that name came about? Agnes Boache. What name is this? <laughs> what kind of name is this? Agnes Boache. <laughs> what? Okay. I blame the punk man. <laughs> <laughs> I bl- <laughs> I blame the punk man. I don't I have no idea where g- just he came from. He just dishing out random names like Gordy. What is Gordy? Gordon Strahan or what? <laughs> Chale, he did when he, he called, in, in the meantime I like the latest one, yours, Butcher in Kegbe. Who's <laughs> Butcher <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, <laughs> Butcher in Kegbe is a para athlete. As far yeah, as he is concerned. And you see, and he's doing wonderful stuff. That's why you should be proud to wear the name <laughs> <laughs> and carry it with honor. No. 
Boti see, in Kegbe. And my my for, for the mere my fact favorite that, my no. favorite name for you though mm-hmm. is Dockers, aka Ducky. <laughs> <laughs> the mere fact that Boto in Kegbe was in the thick of things during the Commonwealth visa scandal oh, is the mere reason why I completely <laughs> and I repeat categorically distance myself <laughs> from that name. In this house, let Boto be Boto. And let Benjamin be Benjamin. You Thank you. Why? You know why we gave you the boat chain kegbe? Well, on the sports desk, if ever there is <laughs> agitation <laughs> for increase in any money, it will be like <laughs> <by the chair. laughs> no. 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 Better better still, you can call it union leader. <laughs> you know where the cheddar is? Uh, yeah. Butter the bread. Of course. And secure the bag. You don't know. Yeah, like the finance minister hey, during t- the week. Taliba. Dude had his bag on. Taliba. Right? I like Canada. something. Hold on, hold on. Hmm. Three weeks yeah. of leave. Mm-hmm. This man has come. He's speaking English. I don't understand. Only you can match up to him. Yeah. <laughs> the accent has changed. Yeah, the accent. The, the game. Where has did changed. you go? Blood, blood. Game changer. Hold on. Yeah. Is <laughs> hold, hold on, blood. Hold on, blood. I told you. I told you that I was hanging out with Warren G a while ago. <laughs> Doctor Drew and I were in the studio kicking beats together. Yeah. What you know? else you say? Oh, <laughs> na- na- Nana, Nana, Missy, <laughs> Mini, Mini, Doctor Dre. <laughs> Me and Dr. Dre, now you was studio in Nimo Wakali. You know, I was sipping on the few things. And then, Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar, be ball puno Nimo. Like, now, Pese Obeye, I want to share a session. And I'm going to say, Kendrick, Kendrick, undo ye. What you say? What you say? But it is what it is. My my time on the East Coast was phenomenal. It was good. It feels good to be back here. I was Man. meeting people like the president of Universal Records, Sony Records. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to announce that very soon we'll be signing Nathan Kwao to Sony Records. That's what I was yeah. doing. Yeah, who knows that show where any breath will show up? Well, on the agenda today, no prizes for guessing. Charlie, today I'm, I'm on the path to giving Kwesi Apia accolades, but I'll get there. Eh? But a wow, a wow, Suleiman. Charlie, you guy, you will get there in a bit. Black stars on the agenda. Ghana versus South Africa is um, done with. Ghana, three points on the board. Clean sheet to boot as well. There's a lot to talk about. We'll talk about Cape Coast as a venue. We'll talk about the new look, Black Stars under the new team. Um, we'll talk about Mohammed Kudus and what he added. But I must start the conversation with Awal because he's trending at number one. Charlie, let me tell you, I, like I said on Fento Tairo's tweet, the guy apparently was a 400 meter runner back in his days in school. You see? And like I'm saying, those days, I mean, even now, there's just minor coverage on Intercoin and things. The guy perhaps was a great runner. Nobody ever saw him run. And then the Black Stars have come to the Cape Coast Stadium. 20,000 fans and over. Ah, nana. National Spotlight, the near Black Stars in Kwadia. Today, we all will go enjoy the spotlight. But, <laughs> quick one. Sports Panorama probably brought to us by Betway and also by DSTV. I'll be getting into details on the juicy stuff that Betway and DSTV have for you. The loyal listeners out there to enjoy. But, also... um. My name is Benjamin Inketia. I got so excited introducing the show that I forgot to introduce myself. It gets, it gets like that sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah. you did. Oh, yeah. I, I, it gets like okay, that sometimes. Get oh, don't do that. Your, your, your microphone is off again. Well, you can join the show via text and WhatsApp on 0549-986-996. 0549-986-996. And then, um, also... You can join us via uh, Twitter, tweet at me at Kojon Ketia. Use the hashtag sports panorama batali a while eh? you let me just take a short music break we'll talk about a while in the black stars in a bit so the the, the biggest the biggest um talking point i mean ghana beating south africa was not the biggest talking point for me Awa was my talking point charlie the guy spoiled it he invaded a pitch at the Cape Coast Stadium during the Ghana uh, versus South Africa clash and he will face prosecution for his actions, according to the police in the central region. Amazing. Now, he's been identified as Awau Suleiman. He's a 25-year-old man and he ran the entire pitch. But Charlie, guys, you know the part I like. When I saw the still photos of the event, um, see the first officer who was behind him. 
<laughs> the guy who was wearing the white sneakers. Charlie, the way the guy running like some Usembo, like you will catch the guy. Oh, I see what the guy did inside the chew grass. Charlie, that guy, see. You, you see. see, you get here. Me. I watched the video closer. Yeah. I watched it closer and I'll tell you what was going on. You see, the incident happened around the time when Andre Ayu was trying to change his jersey. Yes. Yeah. So he was by the touchline trying to change his torn jersey. And for those of us who were lucky to be videoing at the same time, all we realized were some people pursuing a certain man. There was this guy who was running Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. and everybody was cheering him on. Charlie. And you see, after having watched the video yeah. closer, mm-hmm. the fire service man who fell over, please, and if you have the video, go back and watch. Charlie. He was wearing white boots. Huh? <laughs> Every serviceman wears black or something like that. Guy not, so he was wearing boots. white boots. To make sure the size are quite well, I mean, just also by a jumon. Cotokraba, you say boots. And the, be- <laughs> <laughs> the best thing I saw about this incident somebody said, Fire service for someone say you say fire, no, they run. So you would train your. <laughs> Yeah. You would on your feet. Neighbor, guy on your feet. But you see stomach and you want to use the one and two Jesus. But but let me just finish briefing you. I mean, the man was arrested. He was taken to the University of Cape Coast Police Station, okay. where he spent the night in prison cells. Now, the Central Regional Police Command, um, led by COP Paul Awini, says that the pitch invaders prosecution will start. On Monday, so let's listen to um, COP. I will need to speak about it, and then I'll come to you for your submissions. A few minutes before the end of the match, one spectator, who is a, a nurse, I'm told, resident around um, Kotokraba, was one of the spectators. Jumped the metal bars into the playing field. And then uh, my officers and other security personnel had to chase him and arrest him and took him out of the field. Uh, It brought the game to a temporary halt until he was taken out before the referee resumed the play. Well, he broke the law and uh, we took him into custody and we are investigating that case and uh, as soon as we can, but we believe possibly on Monday morning, we will put this gentleman before court to answer for why he did that. So he had COP when He also explained why the pitch invader cannot be allowed to go scot-free. Last night when we arrested this young man until this very moment, I have had several calls eh, and appeals from people that we should let him go. But you see, it's not as easy as that. For two main reasons. And I'll tell you one of these first. The first one is that, remember that um, the Cape Coast Sports Stadium, yesterday's match will not be the last of its kind at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. It is highly likely, based on the patronage that um, uh, the match enjoyed yesterday, that other matches of the Black Stars may be played at the stadium, Cape Coast. So, if we just release this young man to go, I can assure you that that culture of impunity will fester. And there will be copycat, such copycat acts of that nature in the subsequent matches that will take place here. Mm. Now, COP Awin is not done. He also raised general concerns about the Cape Coast Stadium. Remember very well that the Cape Coast Sports Stadium is one of the best in this country, one of the -the state-of-the-art sports stadia that we have in the country, the Cape Coast Sports Stadium. But there is one thing that is a drawback, and I'm talking as a police officer from the public order management perspective. From this perspective, the design of the Cape Coast Sports Stadium 
I can tell you, is not suitable for the control of large disorderly crowds. It's not. And why am I saying this? For two main reasons. Number one, there is no inner perimeter in the stadium. <clears throat> no inner perimeter that will physically prevent spectators from breaching protocol and getting access to the field of play. And then number two, the outer perimeter is literally non-existent. You know the stadium, and that outer perimeter, which is that short or dwarf fence wall, uh, is at waist level. If you take a, 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 an average adult height, it's at waist level. Anybody can easily scale it and get inside the stadium. So from the bosom of that Awao Suleiman um, incident, a lot more worms have been let out of the can. Very interesting. But Charlie, Awao, whatever you did, Charlie, do too. Why? It will go well. Whoever, whoever I, told I you... I cannot imagine. <laughs> I really cannot imagine what Awao must have experienced last night. No, but see, let me tell you one. Let me tell you one. custody. Whatever it is that he experienced, I think he, he sort of um, did some for thinking he knew that this will come he knew that if he ran across the pitch and they caught him this is not europe you go chop slaps <laughs> you, go, you go chop slaps it be, it be Ghana with day you go chop slaps i mean listen like the cave coast people they don't get a lot of games for one oh yeah this is like the first time a major game like this is going there they are trying to put up a good face so that a game will come again and you want to come and spoil their name you go chop slaps so oh, wow your 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 court proceedings will begin on Monday, but Nathan, you're, you're making a submission. Um, I, <laughs> I, I just, I just found the entire episode really funny. We were watching the game, and then you saw this guy running across the pitch and had us all laughing and everything. But I think when you when you sit down and digest the details of the incident, it, it raises great questions. And I'm happy that our, our senior police officer has mentioned that mm -hmm. that the Cape Coast Stadium does not have an inner perimeter. And a very short, and a very very outer short perimeter. outer perimeter, so people can actually scale the wall and get into the stadium. Which they did yesterday. I saw them. People and, basically yes, jumped yes. into the stadium. And that was, I, 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 I'll deal with that in, in a bit. But I feel that for security purposes, this is very uncomfortable. This is extremely uncomfortable. If one person can leave his seat, get down the aisle. And run onto the pitch. Any other thing is possible. Mm -hmm. If one person can break protocol, breach security, and run onto the pitch, any other thing is possible. And you heard COP when he speak about it. He says that the Cape Coast, the security around the Cape Coast Stadium, is literally a joke. The security, no, no, it's just the security considerations, guys. That, that were, in the worst mm -hmm. case scenario, mm -hmm. what if this gentleman had a weapon? Exactly. And it, it wouldn't have been noticed. Let, let's, let's, he, let's, and in the videos, it looked like he was holding something that looked like a baton. I don't know what it was. Y you see, I the, think it was the, his slippers. <laughs> because he was running barefoot. Very possible. You see, Nathan, not to cut you, the point you're making about what he could possibly have been welding, I think this is where uh, the COP's concerns must be noted with all seriousness. Because getting access into the Cape Coast Stadium or any stadium in this country for that matter, we do not do body scanning. Mm -hmm. We don't search people. I mean, 20,000 so, people went so into a ground and without nobody... being searched. Ooh. So all of these people are in the stadium without having gone through any sort of search at all. So anybody could have been holding anything inside that stadium. And I raised this point yesterday. I was with colleagues, even on the media stand. The stadium was so full, we didn't have places to sit. People were sitting in between the lines, on the walkways, on the floor. Because the stadium was so full, they didn't have anywhere to keep the students who were supposed to enter the, students, uh, the, the stadium for free. So when the students came, apparently a lot of them came late. 
tickets were sold out obviously so the stadium was already full and because they had announced that it would be free for students all of them were granted access to the stadium without any ticketing without any form of identity nothing whatsoever those who thought they were wasting their time mm. at the main gate basically scaled that outer uh, wall that the cop referred to as being on waste level because it's really that short wow and you don't have police officers or prison officers or security personnel guarding the entire wall all around the stadium so from any end anybody can just, jump in just a quick one what was the security situation like in terms of number of police personnel number of police vehicles um what what, what kind of that um, what kind of um if i would say uh, self-defense artillery or whatever self-defense yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean, I mean the poli- yeah they were there they had there were tanks there there were how many, about how many because I, I, think I, could, I, I think i i i could i could count about three what wait there was a crowd of over twenty thousand in that ground and yes. there were how many policemen not policemen we're talking about trucks no no okay tanks. Two, three tanks yes the, is what i'm talking the about SWAT, the swat tanks yes okay so i could count about three of those but the policemen they were quite a lot of policemen both inside the stadium okay. outside the stadium not just policemen fire service as well because we're not just talking about criminals here we're also talking about oh, fire yeah, situations yeah, yeah. um you know so we had a lot of security however it was inadequate in the manner especially considering the nature of the stadium and that's the biggest problem and that's where i think cop's concerns have to be noted because if you have how many do you know how many policemen you need to have to be able to station them maybe five meters away from each other all around the stadium to prevent people from jumping the wall because even if you have people all around the stadium guarding that short wall and one jumps in you need more than one police officer to hold one back so while they are doing that the others are using the other end to jump in so it literally is impossible to stop people from scaling that wall and getting into the stadium if they really want to and yesterday a lot of them did quite a frustrated number of them did that now once they get inside the perimeter the compound of the stadium getting access onto the stands itself is another matter and we i saw some people well some security personnel maybe two or three on each staircase and these staircases are quite big maybe five uh, five meters uh, wide uh, so you can you have like two people there if you have hundreds of people mm-hmm. coming at the same time they literally can't stop Exa- everybody ex- exactly and say oh, we are searching all of you so everybody just walks in mm-hmm. they're overwhelmed they allow them to get inside wow and yesterday that was the situation because there were definitely more than 20,000 fans in that yes city. more than the capacity way more than no and I was beginning to get worried even before kickoff because all the walkways exit, all the exits were occupied by people who were mm. standing, sitting on the floor everywhere. And mm. once you're inside, getting access to the pitch itself is like Nathan said, there's nothing there really preventing you no from. No barricade, nothing. Nothing. There's no inner perimeter, which is actually a requirement for all league matches uh, in Ghana. Every it, uh, pitch has what? to have. So the Cape Coast Sports Stadium, we need to rethink the security situation. And the other jurisdiction, uh, jurisdictions, this would be nice. You take Anfield or Stanford Bridge. They don't have inner perimeter, but people behave themselves. We, can't, we know our people. We know how they are. So we need to take precautions. And I think that actually yesterday I was quite... Because after the game, and that's one thing that people are not reporting. Nathan, after the match, after the Black Stars players took the, that, uh, that lap uh, of honor around the stadium yep. applauding the fans, yep. when they got closer to the VIP stands and were about... Uh, just when they were approaching the entrance back onto the dressing room, mm-hmm. there were quite a huge number of students who scaled the wall and started running in numbers like ants like that huge coming towards the players and they did get to the players started you, mobbing you, them you before security me? i have a video before security uh, then started to chase them back up and it was another really uh, really uh, confused situation of students running all the way back supporters running back because they were prevented from getting too close to the players. All these things, it's not entirely safe. And some of the players were mopped. And I'm saying, 
while a lot of these people may be showing great intentions, you never know the day that a bad person in there mm-hmm. would do something. That's I always mean, the problem. See, but the truth of the matter That's is always that, the problem. I, I mean, at this standard of football, this is professional football. This is not Colts football. This is not grassroots football. This is not Sunday stars. You cannot let individuals invade a pitch and mob professional. F- it's not even done anyway. You know, and 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 so I, I think that something has to be done. You know, that support was massive. It was great. It was fantastic to see how much people wanted to see the Black Stars of Ghana, and a lot of the people that I spoke to yesterday, quite a huge number of them, were just excited to see the Black Stars for the first time because the Black Stars have only ever played at Cape Coast one time before. Mm. That game against Egypt, uh, against Egypt. In 2017, that World Cup qualifier. Yep. Of course, uh, we know that the local Black Stars have played there many, many times. Other national teams have been there. The, but the Black Stars proper don't play there very often. So it's exciting to have them come there. But at the same time, we need to care about the safety of the people we are bringing there. So, so And if we are going to, uh, to do that, then we need to be guaranteeing a lot of people's safety. And I think moving forward, we've said this many, many times, that a lot of our stay there are not... Uh, and are not fan friendly, mm-hmm. family friendly. Yep. Because the situation yesterday, if you came there with your kids, your wife and kids, you were basically going to find it difficult. Because, I mean, I, I saw, <laughs> and that was a funny situation. People came in, and I saw a lot of like expats who came in with tickets, and then they, when they came in, they were literally stuck at the entrance. They couldn't access the, <laughs> they couldn't access any of the stands. So they were standing there. They can't even see. For wow. 19 minutes, they stood just behind there waiting for somebody to shout go and then they shall go to because they can't see. Wow. And not just them. And I'm not just talking about them because they're ex- expert. They were a huge number of other Ghanaian supporters who were there in the same situation. Who were inside the stadium, it, but it, they couldn't it, see. Is the stadium disability friendly? Yes, it is. It is. It is disability friendly. You can you can basically go through there in a wheelchair and go all the way onto the stands. It's it, that, it that's is. actually very important. It, it is no. It is. It is very important. But I, this this issue of not having controlled crowds is problematic. First of all, we don't have a proper ID system already for mm-hmm. identifying our fans. So you yeah. can't ban the fan for life here, or you can't ban the fan three nope. months from going to the stadium. Nope. You don't know him. Nope. The one he's buying the tickets from, you don't know. So we already don't have that. We don't know which people are in the stadium at any given time. So the least we can do, because we don't, we can control those things. The least we can do is to ensure that anybody entering there is entering there without anything that can potentially harm anyone, for example. And then two, and more importantly, that we have the right number of people inside the stadium. We cannot have situations where there are always more people than available spaces. It is dangerous. Mm. All I have to add to this is we need to take security at these type of gatherings seriously. Not just football matches, but I mean, any large gathering of of, of such a nature. It could be um, a political party congress. It could be a church crusade. It could be a football game. But the last thing you want is a repetition or anything even close to that May 9th disaster. I believe that as a people, we do not need to see footage of that incident and that day to be reminded. People go to football games for entertainment. People go to football games to make themselves happy, to distress. You do not go to football games to pile up more stress. Imagine that because of the situation yesterday, somebody had uh, picked up an injury or somebody had lost a life. I mean, all the 2 zero against South Africa would have been for nothing because we would have been in a grieving state as it stands now. We need to do better as people. Uh, people need to do better as individuals when they attend uh, football matches. Let me get to my message box here. Um, this one um, says, I also do not see why the Awao guy has to be arraigned before court. This isn't the first of such incidences in football and it will definitely not be the last. These police should stop um, the jokes. This one also says, I'm surprised at how Ghana police have taken trivial issues uh, as World Cup in this country. Uh, these things happen in Europe. This one is from... Yeah, but, 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 but you see, yes, they do happen in Europe. But people get punished yeah, for Yeah, but the things. stories don't end there. Exactly. People That's what people punished. People yes. get punished. You're so. going to get punished for this. And especially in Europe where a proper ID system, you can't run anywhere. They're going to track you down and punish you. I would be Bernard from Madina says, Ben, welcome back. Uh, please 
Help me ask this question. Was it necessary for a while to enter the pitch? Aside that, congrats aside that, congrats to the Black Stars. Again, which part of Medina is the Black Stars coming to do their training? And when are oh. they coming? I'll be giving you an update. They train, this, they train this evening. This evening. Yeah. They'll train again tomorrow oh. evening. That's a, where the Zura? Uh, Zurak Park. Zurak Park. Let's just say the Medina uh, Medina Astrotef, yeah. yeah. Very new, right? Very, yes, very yes, new. Yes, 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 yes. The, you know the youth there protested. They protested. They said it wasn't. It, it was uh, abandoned standard. for a long time. No, no. They and said the, the, it the pitch wasn't a standard, standard pitch. Yeah, imagine. But they say it's standard, so. Yeah. Now, this one here um, says that as for GH police, dear, non fat in Kwan, the real thieves are there. Make them go arrest them. Then, um, what? UCL, then World Cup finals, or these things, they happen. Okay. This one here. Says that uh, good evening, congrats to the whole Ghana for yesterday's victory over SA. Let's not be enticed into thinking Kwesi Apia is a tactical masterclass. The match was won <laughs> by psychological and emotional feelings surrounding uh, football. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Even Def and Dumb Team B would have still won this particular match. I'm not sure about that. Um, Mensa for Mashali Botre says, Awal is being sent to court because he exposed and embarrassed the weakness in our security services. He should rather be employed to handle the fitness training of police recruits. <laughs> Interesting stuff there. Uh, let me read a message coming through. This one is coming in from our colleague journalist, Seidu Damu. He says that, I was at the police headquarters in Cape Coast today and the men on duty admitted that they had they had to allow hundreds of fans to jump the wall into the stadium because <laughs> they were overwhelmed. Yeah, true story. Christ. Well, let me re- let me just read that again for emphasis, just so you know that I'm not speaking gibberish. It says, I was at the police headquarters in Cape Coast today, and the men on duty admitted that they allowed fans to jump the wall into the stadium because they were overwhelmed. That is top Profound. three among one of the i won't call it useless but brain neutral explanation i don't even know how this works i I wonder if they thought let's let's let me just read a few more messages um this one says fence whenever i'm going to enter the accra sports stadium they body check me using their hand look at that Hmm. At least that's at least that's better than no checking I'm, at all. I'm, I'm not letting anybody body check me with. We their just hands need off. body scanners. We have these things what at our airports. Why can't we have them at exactly public spaces? And, and remember in Egypt, we went to three yes. body scanners. It got even. It can get even annoying to you. Exactly. In Qatar, it was the same. And then there are people who are uh, checking you with hand. After you've gone through like three different scanners, mm-hmm. somebody else is there just to physically to dub yeah. you up. Oh, gee. Boy, man. <sighs> it's, it's all right. Let's read more messages. So I say the stadium has a maximum capacity. Why do we admit more than that capacity? Tragedy are waiting to happen. Um, this one also says that Ben Evening, who will be charged for the um, overcrowded stadium, which means the law was broken because the policemen said. The gentleman who ran onto the pitch broke the law, which I agree. Um, this one also says that if it is the new, if it is the new looking shape of the Black Stars midfield with party as a deep line playmaker, then one of either himself or Wakaso will find himself on the bench because the guy in the six shirt was phenomenal. I think you're talking about Idrisu. For Kudus, we know what talent he is. Jude inside Kakasuna and Kan number one. Nimate from last says, guys, was there a probe into what happened on a certain May 9th? Was a report published on the findings? In oh, that yes. report, do we have anything on crowd management or stadium capacity or occupancy? Hmm. Hashtag Ghana football. Hashtag sports panorama, you say. Eddie from Achimota says that the stadium um, the stadium being full is nothing to me because the Cape Coast Stadium is half the Accra Sports Stadium. So, it's being full is nothing. As for the pitch invader, it's normal. Even a few days ago after Ronaldo completed his hydra guy, well, that's not justification. Ghana is Ghana. Ronaldo's Portugal is Ronaldo's Portugal. Chale Awal really has become a star for all the wrong reasons. He didn't get the attention when he was a sprinter in school. He attempted it. (laughs) <laughs> he attempted to get crash the black stars party and it hasn't gone well for him um, i've heard side stories that he he made a bet with his friends about whatever it is charlie even if you won the bet cry right now you spent all the bet paying bill money so charlie who's lost right now sad stuff
Sports Panorama proudly brought to us by DSTV. Now DSTV, they are encouraging you to go out there and watch our Ghanaian players who are doing big things around the world. Yeah, Kevin Prince Boating is still out there, large and in charge, playing football for Fiorentina Football Club. Mubarak Wakaso, Black Stars Midfield General, plays for Deportivo Alaves. You can watch him in the Spanish La Liga as well on DSTV. Thomas Partey needs no introduction. He is the guy. As far as Atletico Madrid are concerned, they are you brothers and of course Kojoa Samoa to name a few. Just buy a DSTV Zappa for 199 Ghana CDs and you will also get one month access subscription. Valid for a limited time only. You can also get all the UEFA Euro games on our French add-on package which is the French Plus for 175 Ghana CDs. DSTV will let you feel every moment. Betway, of course, eternally holding us down on Sports Panorama. Shout outs to the Betway guys. Now, the Betway Money Back Boost lets you back more of your favorite teams by giving you up to 20 times your bet back if you're unlucky. Visit betway.com.gh and create a multi bet that has six or more selections. If one of your selections lets you down, we'll refund up to 20 times the value of your bet. The more selections you add, the more you get back. Bet your way with Betway today. Terms and conditions apply. Betway for the love of the game. No under 18. Bet the responsible way. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, you know who is joining the show. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back. G97.3. Accra. Hey, Travel the country in just 30 minutes on the Utah bus. I'm just coming from the home or from the palace of the new Yana. This is our story being told. Journeys to explore. From the plains to the greens to the scenery to everything. Ah. There's so much we need to do, you know, to boost tourism around this area. Ooh, that guy was just getting up. Learn and indulge in the culture and lifestyle of the people. Live here on City 97.3, Benjamin Inketia here, Fet Tahiro and Nathan Kwa, my guys in the studio. We have a surprise. The rabbi is on the phone. Rabbi. The rabbi is doing some spiritual cleansing. We'll be getting to him in a bit. But do join the conversation via text and WhatsApp. 0549986996 and 0549986996. Also get to me on social media, Twitter at Kojon Ketia. Use the hashtag Sports Panorama. So we're about to delve into the game itself. The tactics, the standout players, the players who perform below par and what this means for Ghana heading into that Monday encounter against Sao Tome and Principe. Remember that we'll talk a little about the under-23 team as well. But like I said, the rabbi is on the line. Coach Christopher Nimli, a.k.a. Numo, Ofaine, Wolo Wana, Wolebenu Fiole, Wongabu Bekene. Numo, you are welcome. Oh, Numo! Numo! No more, oh Charlie. Well, Did it, you receive the package? I received it by drone. Oh no more! It was, oh, it, was it was properly packaged and delivered. Oh no more! <laughs> and it was put to good use. I, I don't I don't even have to tell you about that. <laughs> oh Charlie. Oh Charlie. No one now. No one now. Oh Charlie. No Teddy. Oh Teddy Anna. Oh Teddy Anna. Oh Teddy Anna. Good. You were you were inside the Cape Coast Stadium, like you say yourself, to witness things for your, for, I mean, with your own two eyes. Let's talk about three things. The people want to hear from you on three things. We'll give you ten minutes to go on. Talk to me about what you've seen with Kwesia Pair post Afcon 2019. Talk to me also about the tactical shape, the new players involved. Those who impressed you, those who didn't, and what this means for the future. All right. 
it's a very, very wonderful opportunity to be on this program. Um, to all those listening, I know when I tweeted earlier on that it is very possible I could miss the show. I had some very interesting response. I'm very sorry. I should have been there, but circumstances beyond my control completely uh, would not allow me to be there today. But I'm part of the show as usual. Benjamin, this technical team means business. This technical team is very intense of bringing, help bring back the love that the people of Ghana uh, should be given to the Black Stars. And for me, we have gotten to the transition. And you are one of those people who have been with me for years, and you bear with me. I've always been complaining about the fact that as a country, we delayed in our transition when it comes to the Black Stars. But thank God, eventually, finally, the transition is here. Like you rightly said, if you look at the players called up to this thing, this is the proper Black Stars for the next eight years. I repeat, next eight years. That as we go along, surely there'll be one or two introductions depending on the quality that every player elsewhere will want to offer the team. For me, I think this team is in safe hands. It has to, don't forget, we have a coach whose contract runs out in about a month's time. He's done a little bit of shake-up to the second team. And for all, the, all of us who see the quality and the desire and the sort of a, a, a tactical know-how that Sika Akono has brought on board, you look back at it, okay, if this is going to be the tactical chemistry, the technical thing is going to work with, you want to look at them and say, oh, come on, let's allow these guys to continue with their work. So for me, I think for the fact that the coaching... Have, uh, the coaches have decided that finally that transition is here. I think it is proper. We allow them to continue. So for those who are in charge of the contract extension, if they are listening, we all need a, we need a Ghanaian to do this. There should be no foreigner, no white man coming to continue coaching the black side. We've gone past that stage. Because he might have some very uh, 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 flaws, but along the line, that is why he's brought on somebody like Speaker Connor who is equally, I'm not saying Ibrahim Tanko is not good enough. Look at what he's doing in Egypt. Completely magnificent. A new breed of coaching experts. A new breed of young, energetic, tactically important coaches, local coaches, Ghanaian coaches, are being uh, 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 put on board. Akosi Apia is the one leading the charge. He wants to give everybody the opportunity. And Akosi not giving Ibrahim Tanko the opportunity. He will not be the head coach of the Black Metal team as we speak. So the introduction or the coming on board of Sik I think is in the right direction. Now, let's come to the game itself. Look, I was there. Fenty was there. We were there. And every Ghanaian had a feel of what the Black Stars is all about. Look, believe you me, the last training section of this team, which to me was the most important training section of the team, did not give the coaches enough impetus to stand on and say, this is what we will do on the day. Because believe you me, the coach has only had half of the training section with this group of players. We had the large back of the players coming on board on Monday. So Tuesday was a light shake-up. The Wednesday was actually when they did a bit of training with a shift in mind. To be honest with you, the last training section did show that the coach was going to start with a starting, uh, 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 starting 11. But on Thursday morning, when again, my, my, my inside information told me that when again, they look at the South African tactically and look at how dangerous they could be, there was a tactical switch in formation and in personnel. For example, if you look at what transpired on Wednesday, it was clear that in midfield, it would have been Alfred Duncan, Thomas Pate, and Kudus playing directly in the middle with Andre leading the attack and Jordan and then uh, 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 Kudus coming from the flank. But again, a tactical assessment of the uh, uh, South Africans did show that they are both a play back from their right back, their right full lateral full back. And their most dangerous attacking player in Pesachao usually start from the right of the attack. And if you look at the Black Stars, we started with a very inexperienced left back. That is where we got into. So we have to work to make do with what we've got. So because 
We started with a very inexperienced left back. That left back needed to be protected and protected very, very well. Now, if you look at the midfielders we've got in the middle of the park, Alfred Duncan, Thomas Parkin, Baba Palifu, the question is, which of these three could tactically balance the team on the left-hand side of the uh, 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 which we would normally call the left winger, so that we will ensure that the South Africans do not punish it from that side. So you can clearly see that if you've got a left-footed midfielder in Alfred Duncan, who's got power, who's got strength, it is very appropriate that you ask him to adjust. Alfred Duncan is not a left winger. He's a central midfielder. That is where he can influence the game better. But for the sake of the team, I repeat, for the sake of the team, the technical team believes that he had to shift and so he was made to shift. So now, Kudu dropped to the bench and Baba Salifu came in because we've seen Baba Salifu played in the Spanish La Liga of Baba Baba Idrisu, you mean? Baba Idrisu from Mallorca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Baba Idrisu of Mallorca. He's been completely magnificent. Look, you don't play in the Spanish League if you're not a good passer of the ball. You don't play in the Spanish League if tactically you don't have good awareness. You don't play in the Spanish League if you're not a, 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 a bulldozer or someone who will bring stability or shield your back for better. So now the team can decide that they needed to bring on the Basali. So if you look at the game tactically, look, the back four was a two, four, five, excellent. The number three in Gideon Mensa, the first 20 to 30 minutes, he was not himself. So that took a lot away from attacking from that side. So whoever, look, everybody were all concerned that why is it that after Duncan, who's a very good center midfielder who wants to see the, the field in front of him, is playing up well. We all saw it took a lot away from the young man's game in that first half. He was completely not influencing the game the way he wanted to play. The coaches have made us to understand that it was tactical. So they were not so much interested in how many times Duncan would catch the ball and move it forward. They were interested in ensuring that he would tactically stop the South African right back from making any run forward and then top up and double up uh, with Gido Mensah against Pesitao. So that, in my view, was successful. Now, in the first 25 minutes, we needed to assess the South African problem because they have been around for a long time. Like I said earlier, we had only half of a full training section, this group with the technical. So for those of us who are coaches, we were wondering that we needed to be very, very cautious. God being so good, Thomas Pate got as that all-important first goal in the first half. So again, tactically, once we, we, we had the lead, look at the game again. When we scored, the next 10 minutes after that goal had gone in, the South Africa completely dominated and passed it to submission. So because we had a very good, solid shape, which eventually gives credit to the tactical decision taken by the second captain to pull out Kudus from the start and bring in Baba Salifu and shift at the dungeon so that we will make sure that the South African does not punish us from that side of the field. And whenever they decided to come through the middle, we had Thomas Party and uh, Baba Idrisu to at least repel them. Again, it led to perfection. So in the second half, after the, when actually Pate started enjoying himself, Duncan again came into the pool and started playing. Baba Salifu, we began to play. Jordan Ayu began to at least push the South African back, who became so comfortable. Then that is where I give the plot to uh, Akustia Pia and then Kotsika Connor. The timing of that for Duncan what, substitution to ensure that we they brought on Kudu. Go back and watch the game. Everybody who wants to get that. Anytime Kudu, since the moment Kudu got introduced into the game, he never faced the right back 1v1. All the balls that Kudu had, he was running at the one of the center backs of the South African because there was so much concern going to redeem the goal, they left themselves exposed at the back. But at that time, we had a very intelligent young man whom some of us have promised that he should be part of this match. Technically, he's good running at the center and the second goal, the volume of what we saw. Going into the future, it is clear that in Joseph A, the player who, in my view, was the best, was the man of the match yesterday, was Joseph Kady. He distinguished himself tactically as a defender. He won every tackle. His passes were, were, were spot 
reform, the decision making was simply not the adults of the in the second half. The Sitao left the wing and came through the middle. And I was wondering that once he's come to the middle, how was it going mm. to that I thank God that I had the opportunity to speak to Joseph Eddy before the match in the morning and I told him that look, when the South Africa decides to chase again, they will shift the position of the Sitao from being out wide to the middle. We saw that in Afcon when they actually got him to be a bit more by in and around and then play through the middle. When he comes there, he should make sure he allows him mm. to feel the sensation of every 50-50 tackle <laughs> that he will go in with him. And that was exactly what the young man did. He hit him one, hit him two. He was made aware that you don't joke here. If there's no way on the flank, there's absolutely no way through the middle. Mm. So the second team are taking the best of decisions okay. going forward. This is the call of this team. All right. That have to work with. Well, so for me, I think we are on the right path. And for me, we are on the way forward. Just a quick one yep. before I leave. I spoke to Fento earlier. I was listening to the security matters that you people mm-hmm, raised. Mm-hmm. Absolutely spot on. Look, when I saw people with tickets yesterday, they could not get six to six. Simply because the crowd had completely overpowered the police and the security forces outside of the stadium. They were just trooping in and coming out. I was telling myself, this will not happen in any European or proper managed footballing country. We need mm-hmm. to take that very, mm-hmm. very important mm-hmm. and do very well without today. But on the light handle, I know my Chelsea brothers, you know, I cannot end the show without going <laughs> into a little bit. That is why I love that. Fentio knows what I'm going to say. Did you see the guy who ran all over the place? Charlie, he was wearing a Chelsea jersey. Oh, no more. When we were serious, you said you have to go on. Oh, no, <laughs> when we need them things to go on, well, then the, the, the guy added that, that class, that touch. I hear he's been taken to the law court. Look, we, we, we will plead with the authority. We don't want to encourage that. But I think we could use him. He's a, on the positive side, we could use him to get him to talk to the supporters. The brain change that he's talking about, bring him back the love. This is one man we could use at the end of the day because I'm not sure he did that with Andrew bad intent. If you look at when he did it, it was when we were playing, we were a man down because our captain had to go and change his jersey. So me as a coach, I thought, okay, tactically, he did help the situation. But he did what? <laughs> yes, tactically, he did ensure that there was that break and by the time he was dealt with, Andre had gotten his new jersey on and we were back to 11 v 11. But on mm. the more serious yeah. thing, we need to put the Cape Coast Stadium, Stadium. in the better state. F- Fence wants, Fent wants to greet you before you go. No more. Yes. No more. You see, Tona Chelsea B. Ona Yesuba. No. 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 Yesuba, I don't know. Yeah, Jerotum. No more. The, 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 when you get, uh, Ben, have you ever watched a football match with Nimili before? Yeah. How is it like? It's very animated. <laughs> you see the, you see the, you see that video of House of Folk fan Insulting Siki, yeah, that could easily have been Nimili. <laughs> 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 I will not, uh, and Nimili came into the stadium. Num- Nimli, yes, now you are quiet. You know what I was about to say. No, but you are not to put that on air. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good. What we are not to put on air, we will leave off air. But whether if a he hears, is, so we'll be no fear. No more of late. The weather has been hot, man. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Coach Rabbi Christopher. <laughs> namely, <laughs> hey. the gift that keeps giving yeah. is coach namely yeah fantastic yeah. guy nathan i'll take snap thoughts from you and fent on the black stars game a minute or two and then we'll move on to the under 23 team which is the which black nathan meeting. is the yeah. correspondent for. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so, snap thoughts your, your own impressions watching ghana beat south africa and um, what it means going into the south home again i think that the result was very important it was it was a very good result to get at home I was very concerned in the first 20, 30 minutes. I thought the South Africans had our number. They were playing really, really, really well. And we had to find a response. And I think that that Thomas Partigo was important. And it was nice seeing all these other guys, Kudus, and all these other guys getting there. I was watching Kudus and it took me back to two years ago when I first saw Kudus looking heavily overweight. 
plump and out of shape Fat. trying out at the under 17 for the under 17 team i was there with him uh, my very a uh, very good friend nabila and nabila tweeted at me last night saying that do you remember i said yeah nabila, <laughs> i remember when kudus couldn't even run to keep up with his teammates today he's done really well it tells you how much work he's putting the only thing i'd like to say is that we saw a bit of a renaissance under kwesi and when we beat ethiopia 5-0 and then we kind of took steps backwards and he went back to type. I hope that now that he has found this new set, he will persist with this set and give these young players the opportunity to grow. And then let's see if we can get the new iteration of, of the Black Stars. But on the flip side, I'd like to talk a bit about South Africa. You know, we say a lot of things about South Africa and we like to sometimes go at them. I think that they've got a good crop of players. I, I like this. a very bad mentality. Yeah, I think that's what they will have to change. But I look at the players individually. Tactically, you can tell that there is something good I, happening. I, I think one of their best players had to leave on the stretch at Zungu. And yes. the game never was yes, the same for yes, them at yes, that point yes, again. Yes, And I think they also missed the likes of Temba Zwani. He didn't even play in this game at all. But I think they have a good crop. I, I, I watch them and I, I do wish them well. I pray that at least their mentality will change. Because... First, they went from not caring to now some of them care, but you have this other bit of the mentality. I just hope that they'll change because I, I like the crop they have. It's a very, very, very good crop and I think they can do some good things. Your thoughts on the game itself? Yeah, I, I think uh, this result was expected for many, many, many reasons. I don't remember the last time we lost a qualifying match at home here in Ghana. Uh, so it's always been... And Kwesi Ape is one fantastic coach when it comes to qualifying series. He always does well. I mean, this is the man who beat Egypt 6-1. Some of you seem to forget. This man beat Zambia when they were at their pump. Cup of Nations win is difficult to beat on the, con uh, on the continent. He beat them to World Cup qualification. So uh, when it comes to qualifying series, I think a lot of us seem to forget very quickly, but Kwesi Ape is brilliant at that. It's always at the tournaments that <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. always found one thing. But in terms of qualifying series, I think the qualifying series is easy though. Well, Sao Tome is a holiday destination. Hey, but since South Africa wasn't that easy. These guys no, beat but, Nigeria no, but, last no, but South Africa, year. Last year. South Africa are supposed to, if, if it wasn't for their own they mishaps, eliminated mishaps, the house. They are supposed to be African football royalty. But South That's South what I'm is, saying. So, I'm, I'm so saying, it, it wasn't such an, it I, wasn't as I, easy. I, I, I have come to view the qualifying series is based on how it is done as a formality. I think that we should be there regardless. If you are not well, there, I mean, that's, yeah, a, that's a problem. That's fair. I that's it, a well, fair. I think we're making exactly the same point. Yeah. That Kwesi was always expected to win this game. And um, I'm very happy. You know, we've often criticized him for inviting players and not giving them a chance. Yep. This time, that he was actually a handed debuts out to we three players. We just that will come again. Yes. Gideon Mensah, a left-back. Baba Ijisu, brilliant player alongside Pati uh, in midfield. And then Kudus, of course, the icing on the cake. So, it was really good to see that Kwesi Apia is giving a lot of these uh, young players the opportunities. Uh, we do know that the left-back position was forced because there was no other left back available. Yes. Even Lumo was also injured. Mm -hmm. uh, Baba Mohammed was a choice. Yeah. And uh, credit to Kwesi Apia for that. Uh, and Which brings me to something that's happening. And we must stop this. We have to absolutely stop this. I have seen mm -hmm. the agenda of people trying to credit the win to CK Akono. And I, take I've, all the I've credit seen, away from Kwesi Apia. Well. Don't do that. Do not do that. Kwesi Apia is the head coach. Apia has he takes the flag. So he takes the praise. Yeah. That's very important. It, no, it is. It's very important. He takes the flag. He takes the praise. That's why I said Don't today I was going and to choose. Mayele fans. Yes. Chef Mayele. He, Chef Mayele. Everything, yes. And he was asked about the role of Siki. Don Mayele. In this win. And he said, well, he's my assistant. Sometimes you need assistant to keep an eye on certain things that you cannot see. And he gave him the credit that he duly deserved. But please, it is not. It's it is not actually. highly appropriate, inappropriate for you to attribute the win to CK while the head coach himself is there and he had taken flack for a long time. Mm -hmm. When he won 6 1, we didn't give credit to Maxwell Kunedu. Oh, yeah. When he beat Egypt 6 1, we yeah. didn't. We gave him the credit. The same way when he lost to Tunisia last time, we didn't blame. Uh, uh, anybody else? We blamed him. him. So when he wins, you give, give him the credit. Him if he credit. loses, you can you can blame him all you want. 
and, and, and I, I saw a very interesting comment said well right now it seems that people are uh, you know they are to, after especially after after Christian Apia praised uh, CK very well somebody said uh, the relationship is between him and CK is still at the Madia mind the gutter stage <laughs> <laughs> wait till it gets to can't you see the gutter in front of you stage <laughs> that's a different stage altogether the things that I said they are very interesting but right now I think it's a good time uh, for the black stars and I like the fact that the GFA is taking the team closer to the people let's give them credit that bring back the love campaign was very strategic very effective the stopovers in Winneba and Mankesim boosted the attendance at the Cape Coast Stadium today they have decided to take training to Medina Which and, is they will good. T- and they will take it to now, Medina again tomorrow now the team should win as a trophy Finish. yes so <laughs> yeah. oh, Oh, I know the yeah. end. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, of we can, course, we can course, dance course. around play yeah. points. If we don't get the trophy, yeah. it's all for yeah, Of course, the only way to really yeah. bring back the love is win, win, win. Yeah. But for yeah. now, you know the black stars of Ghana. Uh, right now, I think the love is back and truly back. They just need to sustain it by winning and winning and yes. winning. Well, win let's, let's, let's get to another national team, the under-23 side. They started their under-23 campaign on a rather shaky note. They got a draw and a defeat. And it looked like they were staring down um, the barrel of the gun. But they managed to uh, produce a wonderful second half against Mali. A team that have been a thorn in the flesh of Ghana at all levels in as many years (laughs) as I can remember in recent times. 2-0 is how that game ended. Um, We are almost, we are through to the final four. Yeah. The games that were being played today in Group B are over. Nathan, yes. just give us a quick update on those games. So it was, it was uh, Cote d'Ivoire 1, Zambia 0, and Nigeria 0, um, South Africa 0. So what it means is that Cote d'Ivoire top Group B mm-hmm. on 6 points and South Africa finished second on 5. So meaning mm-hmm. that Ghana will take on Cote d'Ivoire mm-hmm. and then Egypt face South Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So that's that's where we are now. <laughs> you say you will not win your match. You're going to play Cote d'Ivoire. We, play, we take on Cote d'Ivoire. Which is not so bad. And, and the price, you see, it's a very, it's a very straightforward. I'd, I'd, I'd have preferred South Africa. It's a straightforward equation. If you beat Cote d'Ivoire, that's it. You have your Olympic ticket because yep. the top three mm-hmm. from this tournament will go to Japan 2020. Yep. So if you get into a final, you are guaranteed one spot. So that's it. So that's why Ibrahim Tanko has to play. Yeah. Just this one game and win. If he loses, he can slug it out in the third and fourth place playoff. But if you know that if you win this and you are going to a final, that gives you your ticket. That's yeah. it. Your job is done. So it's unless, unless you want to go win to, one of the two games and we are yes, the unless place. you want to unless you want to go to Japan as African champions, which is all well and good, but it doesn't add anything. Hmm. Really, because we've not been to the Olympics since two thousand and four. But I go back to the game that was played mm-hmm, yesterday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that Ibrahim Tanko, as a, I think that it's, it's a very interesting mystery. Yeah. About how ninety nine percent of his first halves never seem to work. Are you saying that he has a malam second half? I don't know. Yes. Scoring scoring malam goals. But the second half always works, mm-hmm. except in that Egypt game, which was a complete letdown, a complete horror show. But the second halves always are better. He responds better, reacts better. The change to bring on Kabnaus was absolutely good. He took off Robin Polly. He hadn't influenced the game in the first because in that first half the blacks the black matches were poor. But once that change happened, things started to to loosen up, and then they started to create. Yeah, your ball was getting on the ball. Um, Samuel Obing was was very active, and I loved his output. He was working hard, making things happen, and then eventually you had Kabnaus scoring twice and. Of the goals he scored, it's, it's the first one that I love so much. A good cross by Kingsley Phoebe. And the intelligence to head the ball back across the goalkeeper to, to, to get that first goal was absolutely important. And it was a very, very good way of scoring. And then he got the second. He was there. Um, a knock-on from a midfielder and then he took it and, and finished. I think it was a very, very good way to, to close the game out. But the Meteors will have, if they have any thanks to give, they need to thank the Egyptians. Because the Egyptians played yeah, out... They promised to do the yep. job for us. They, Egypt, they Egypt played out a camera. very, very, very solid performance. They could have decided that we've qualified. Who cares? But they played out a very, 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 very solid performance against the Cameroonians. They took the lead. The Cameroonians responded. But they pushed and got themselves a winner. And I think that... Brahim <laughs> Zanko have to call the Egyptians and thank 
him because now they've given him a lifeline. Yeah. He needs to take it. The mentors have to realize what they are playing for. Win one more game, you are back in the Olympic Games. You make history. Your names get written in, into the book. So I was happy with the second half. I just hope that now the mentors will play more complete games. Both first and second halves are good. Should the team make it to Tokyo though, I think that Tanko Ibrahim has to work on certain aspects of the team. I think the fullback areas are still very problematic. I don't know what it is with Ghanaian national teams these days and fullback areas where we cannot seem to have players who can actually do a very, very good job for you. Kingsley for the, Fobi, for the fullback areas, so we go back in history and say how many fullbacks we've had. You know, Papo, <laughs> Hans Ebusabe, <laughs> Nana Kusi Asari, uh, Baba Rahman. We can, we can go you know, on the list. Is so and Especially left back. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even think it's just fullbacks. You know? yeah, it's, it's left that back. left yeah, back left position. Back. Sapon is, is not we've playing tried well. Everybody. He's not playing well at all. He's not playing well at all and he has to improve. But Fobi can look at his performance in that second half against Mali and say that, okay, Charlie, that's, a, that's uh, a good 45 uh, minutes. But, he's but, got to but, kick but, on. Let's pause a second. Let's talk about <laughs> Kensley Fobi. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, no, yesterday he did well. No, he did well yesterday. But yeah, you can't just, no, he did well. The Egypt game, eh? You can't just... Ram- look, yeah. Ramadan Sobi. What? But that's Ramadan Sobi. Ramadan Sobi has been warming benches for as long as I can remember. At the fact. Premier League Fence. level. Fence. At the what? Premier League, Fence. a bench player at the Premier Fence. League is Fence. definitely. I'm sure. Uh-huh. Fence, I'm sure. I'm sure. He will have I'm nightmares. I'm sure dream about the guy. I, I'm sure. I'm sure that when Rabadan Sobi wants to have dinner next time, he may unconsciously tell you order Fobi, the <laughs> chef or the waiter. What, Ram, Mr. Sobi, why do you want? Uh, can I have a Fobi, please? <laughs> yeah, <you remember> that. <laughs> Goodness <laughs> me! In, in the words of my friend, no Rokodo. Hey! It was. It was going on. I have never seen. It meant right a winger that absolutely okay. tear a full back up. No, no, Probably no, the no, last no, time I saw that happen, okay. the no, no, last no, time I saw that happen was okay. Anthony was Antonio Valencia on Ashley Cole. The last time I what saw about that Montero was, on was Garrett was on, Garrett Bill on Michael. What about what about on, on Ivanovic. Ivanovic. Oh, dear lord classic performance I was in London I was in London that day I watched that game in classic London. performance oh me they are dead to me <laughs> hey Ali <laughs> <laughs> every timeline <laughs> yeah so that's what's going on friends you want a word on Anna 23 yes you see in this country eh, we are not very honest people why the the you see the the game against Egypt the criticism, the names people call Ibrahim Tanku mm. <laughs> tactically incompetent. Charlie. And like we see, I, th- I think, I think uh, football fans uh, are fickle. Seriously, that's the truth. I think the earlier yeah. we understand this, the earlier the better it will be for everybody. I mean, yes, we understand the performance wasn't great, it wasn't. You can criticize, but you can't use one match to determine uh, when the coach is tactically bankrupt. And that phrase, crap, what does it mean? <laughs> you know, the tactically, tactically bankrupt. bankrupt. And they were berating him left, right, center. Yesterday when they won, I saw tweet people said they were lucky. Ah, but luck, you, know, you make your own luck. You don't put your we 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 had to beat Mali to stand a chance. Could have been a draw. We did our part. Egypt did the favor. It's that simple. We needed to win even by one goal to nil by virtue of the result uh, against Egypt, uh, between Egypt and uh, Cameroon. But we won by two goals to nil, just to be sure. So give him credit. And the win can be directly attributed to Ibrahim Tanko's changes. The decision to bench the team's seemingly best player Mm -hmm. and bring him on to great effect in the second half, that's all credit to the head coach. And, you know, yes, I have seen the argument about not having the best players available. Of course, that's bollocks. It's not only Ghana. Every and the 23 yeah. national and team has not got their best players fence. available. So that can be fence. used and, as And I think we need to put things into context. A lot of people ask us, why aren't... Like Kudus. Why is Kudus not? No, I'm not saying, yeah, why, why isn't Kudus there? Why isn't Gideon Mensa there? Why is... Ashmeru. Ashmeru. This is, the, this is it, really, listeners. This particular under-23 AFCON is not in the FIFA calendar. Like, it is outside the FIFA calendar. Mm-hmm. So, teams are not mandated to allow their players to go. However... By sheer coincidence, the, Af- the senior AFCON qualifiers is part of the global football calendar. So, that's how come we have Kudus here. He could have been playing with the team, but his team has not mandated him to go and play there. Mm-hmm. So, he can come and play for the Blacks. So, that's just a bit of, the co- that's just a, a bit of um, um, context there. The other thing, though, is that the Olympic football tournament is part mm. of the global football calendar. So, in 2020, 
FIFA knows there's an Olympic football tournament. It's actually part of what they so do. So that one, they can't say... That one, yes, that one, no team can say we won't allow a player to go. They do so at their own risk. So mm. if we do qualify, uh, it means that we could be presenting a much, much stronger team. The likes of Joseph Pencil, Gideon Mensah, Ashimeru, even your man. What's his name? Tepete. Oh, they all qualify for this team. They, they actually qualify the team to each. Expertise is a big boy. Oh yeah, big boy. So now. they qualify. That's the, the other advantage Egypt. of having three over each player. Oh my goodness! You know the things uh, uh, Tango will do there. So you see, he has two matches left. Two, two games left. One semi-final match. In fact, he has, one, one, he has one game to look yes, at that's now. One you don't even think about the other game. One match, yep. and that is it. Yep. Out of the two games. Yep. You win one game, that's it. You win your semi-final, you qualify. You don't win the semi-final, you, you win the third place shot. game, you qualify. It really is that straightforward. Life, life is handing you two opportunities. And we are desperate two to not throw it. them away. Yeah. We are desperate. Last one so, was what, 2004? Yeah. Yeah, 2004. Wow. At that time, Adokwe Papu was scoring stunners. Yeah, Adokwe Papu was scoring yeah. <laughs> drew against Italy. Egypt, yeah. Against Italy. <laughs> I mean, At that time, I don't know, guys. Adokwe Papo was scoring stunners against Italy. That name excites me. Adokwe Papo. Yeah. That name excites me. He excites yeah. me. Oh, you remember the two all draw? Oh, boss. Charlie, I forget. Nah. The o- six, against Italy. The o- that is why the 06 o- incident surprises me. Because if you. you And it was the same player, so. There was the same yeah. age group. Yeah. You can't score a stunner, a screamer against them in Athens in 2004. And two years later, you meet them in Germany. You look at the crowd and you shoot the ball over. Charlie, what? Some way, some way. Let me, I'll get to my message box again in a bit. But friends will be reading some tweets also that have been coming through. A lot of tweets coming through from Twitter. Um, Nathan will bring us up to speed with European football. Nathan, the Euro 2020 yeah. qualifiers Euro 2020 are in quali- full oh, yeah. swing. There will be more AFCON 2021 qualifiers as well. Yes. What? do dstv our lovely partners well, have in store for us well yes um so many things happening tomorrow for example i mean d- this week they've been qualifiers england were juicy and nice oh king king ah no no king king he was delivering against a uh, it out yeah. like rice and stew thank you yes uh, like wafa and heart of uh, let's proceed <laughs> please yes <laughs> over the weekend there are so many games russia belgium nothing ireland holland germany take on belarus and Croatia, Slovakia. Earlier this evening, Finland, they won. So, Finland are in the Euro 2020. We'll be seeing Thermo Puki, hopefully, in that tournament. And then on Sunday, there are more qualifiers. Kosovo versus England. Luxembourg versus Portugal. Albania, France. Andorra, Turkey. Then there's the Under-17 World Cup third-place playoff. Just mention Finland. Yeah, the crowd there excited there. Ooh. But I'm sure they are being managed properly. Yeah, invaded the yeah. pitch. So, so, it's France, France against Holland in the Under-17 um, and a 17th third place game which is happening Sunday night and then the final between Brazil and Mexico so that would, should be a fascinating one Juicy also happening game. on Sunday if you love your tennis the ATP World Tour Finals all of that happening uh, this weekend as well tonight, tomorrow and on Sunday if you love cricket check out cricket there's some wrestling as well on DSTV so all that happening so if you love your football check out Super Sport 3, 7, 10, 4, 8, 9 just across you find all kinds of amazing things there uh, plus they are bringing out some great kids channels too lovely Xmas, yeah so that's that's the oh juice Interlagos is this weekend yeah, Interlagos is this weekend in Brazil so yeah. that's live mm-hmm. that's F1 right yeah. Hamilton is already champ yeah doesn't matter crowning moment very important <laughs> Why are you shaking your head? You no, no, sleep no. and you wake up at 2 a.m. to watch basketball. I do actually. Exactly. And people are questioning me for my loyalty for the Dallas Mavericks. Please, and, and it is not your business. <laughs> Let my support know your business. Please, it, it's in, our in, business. in 2011, it when Lovitz. That behavior, even in football. Oh, no, it's not true. No, no, no. In, yeah. in, 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 the, in basketball, I've been a Mavericks fan from the Novitsky days. I just fell off a little. Um, I'm, I'm back to my roots because Luca. Yeah. The boy won that Doncic sh- is in the building. And <laughs> I'm saying it emphatically here. Step blah, blah, back, blah, Johnny. Blah, 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 that Luca blah, 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 blah. will be the face of the NBA in the next three seasons. He'll be the best player in the NBA in the next three seasons. Forget about Yannick. If, doesn't, if that doesn't happen. It will happen. It will happen. I, I have if. Seen, there, there are no ifs in my life. It will happen. There are ifs. No, there are no. I don't. I don't do ifs. I, it will happen. Anyway, <laughs> you get me. If the Michigoro had not arrived, <laughs> let's not talk about that. It, 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 would, it would have meant that an Oppo had kidnapped the drone. <laughs> Only way that Michigoro would not have arrived. 
is if Anoko had caught it in the air <laughs> and kidnapped that drone. So that man, yeah, we'll not talk about it. Talk to me about the tweets that have been coming yeah. through because so, so many, there are so many yeah, um, quite a number oh, of them. Yeah, and uh, them. Sports Panorama is, uh, is, is trending on Twitter right now. And uh, let me just read some of the messages. Uh, Sicho, our good friend, says uh, teams can actually decide not to release their players for the Olympic Games. It's happened several times. Yeah, I don't right. know if it is still uh, happening now. Um, Adamira says, please, the calculator saved us once again. Ghana and calculation are t- a two-way street. <laughs> Interesting. Kweku uh, uh, Kwabonti says, only way they can get my love back, talking about the Black Stars, and oh, they should stop uh, kissing the cash too. And now the team should win us a trophy. Mm-hmm. Um, is what he says. Olifemi uh, Olushambos. Wow. Sorry. Love your name. Uh, he says, I still have my doubts about this Bring Back the Love. Let's try this campaign on a fine Thursday night at the Winijan Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> hey, people are wicked. Why would they uh, do that? Um, okay, so this one says, Martin Avoga says, King Kwao, the rap king of Accra, please drop some bass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that the bar? Yeah, that's the bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right, right. It's just the ha, ha, ha. You know, ha ha ha. That's the bar. You know. Oh yeah. Let's go. Over, let's check. Let's do a review and let's check the bar. Oh. You feeling oh. so right? You feeling like a star? Oh. Why you need a jewel too? Please go on with the tweets for me. <laughs> oh, I love this tweet. I'm a just star. Yeah, I might just start that. Yeah, I might just start that. <laughs> ben, you didn't get it. Yeah. I love this tweet. I might just start. No, I'm still lost. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to rhyme Nathan. scheme? Nathan. It, was, uh, he is lyrically dead. <laughs> Not really. I don't know where you're coming mami, from. Mami two, from a place. Mami nursery rhyme. No, I told you that I was uh, meeting with Warren you, G. And yeah. Kong. I'm a business executive in music now. I've he, he stopped around. He's A&R. Yeah, you're A&R yeah. for Nathan's... Yeah. What? For Nathan? Yeah. Yeah, he's A&R for and, you. And, and for your career music. as well. Your, yeah. you your, know, your, he's A&R for you. For, you, for you, those who don't know, you, 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 look, you can't stay in the same room with a guy if he attends to sing. Now, I... Don't denigrate my singing. Relax. Don't even go there. I'm going there. Look, I thought that former producer of Sports Panorama, <laughs> Franklin Bedu Jr., was a terrible singer. Until I heard Fentio Tahiru sing, I got running stomach immediately. <laughs> but it's fine. Mo- Fent- you can move your desk. <laughs> you can you can move because as far as I'm, I I said okay. next to let's, let's just get back yeah, to it. Nita is, Nita from, isn't complaining. You sit okay. two two desks away from me. You to sing complain. Cold, cold play or Adele. Uh, Kofi next door on Twitter says we, sh- we all saw what happened between a fan and Jack Grealish in the Birmingham derby last season we should take note and tackle football pitch security seriously a uh, very important point um, uh, this message uh, is from uh, Oforiwa who says forget all the controversies Kasfodian's morale was massive I agree yeah. it was huge Gideon Osabute he, just, he says uh, Coach Nimli's take on the pitch in Veda ha 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 um this message is uh, it's from um, Aisha too, who says, just look at this. And if you talk, pet, they will start telling you stories. This happened around the media stand. And she's posted a video, a very interesting yeah. video. That's Aisha of Happy FM. Yeah, Aisha of Happy FM. Uh, a very interesting video of fans really misbehaving uh, at the Kepo Sports Stadium. And uh, Yao Ousu uh, Boahin says, uh, I'm really surprised with the hype CK is getting. Tactical what? Why do you think Kwame Chase sacked him? After all, the money he was taking. After all, the money he was taking. Shinshla still had uh, to do operations. Let's stop the hype. Okay, to be to be to be completely honest, CK wasn't sacked from Kotoko okay. because of non-performance. Um, there were other issues. He was even elevated to technical director. He said he didn't like it. That's the truth. Uh, Prince says listening live there. Yes. Like yeah. <laughs> the prayer warrior. Um, uh, this one is uh, the more messages here. You see, Valassan says, I traveled all the and you. This is you see, Valassan of uh, Liberty, Liberty Professions. Yes. He says, I traveled all the way uh, to Cape Coast only for me to realize that the media stand was four. How I managed to get to the VIP stands there, eh? I entered through the popular stand and successfully jumped over the metal bars hey, to the VIP stand. Successfully, pa. Breaking the law successfully. Yeah. Wow. You see, you, you do all. <laughs> we, are, we are telling your boss. <laughs> successfully um this one says the fans were forcing their way through at the gate even in the presence of the police this message is from oforiwa 
Uh, and there's, uh, there's more here. Foster Santi says, why is Coach Appear always talking about taxes, 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 and yet he's not tactically inclined to? Did you hear the South African coach? The guy says that Kwesi Appear schooled him tactically. I'm still wrapping my head around it, but it's yeah. a conversation sure. for another day. Okay, oh, okay. Molef is <laughs> um, the green turf on Twitter says City fans invaded the pitch and almost got to the players after they won the league in 2014. Different type of fans and security systems, but just saying this because you said it's not done anywhere, referring to Benjamin, yeah, I think Ben, ben as, well. Uh, as well. And uh, Statsotti has a very interesting um take as well. He doesn't, he says. Uh, Cape Coast Stadium was built by the Chinese and yeah, the design of yeah. the stadium is the same thing that was built in Gabon. Nathan, you remember the stadium in Gabon? All of the stadium in Gabon has no inner parameter and outer parameter. Which so doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't yeah, mean, it doesn't that, mean it that. It doesn't, doesn't make that any sense. sense. Yeah. Why do you build a stadium without an inner parameter and an outer parameter? What are you trying to achieve? You see, uh, this one says, I think the wild incident, uh, Kofi Ousu says, I think the wild incident yesterday should be an eye-opener for us in terms of security during football games. In as much as it is entertaining to watch pitch invaders, that behavior shouldn't always be the norm. Also, the police should pardon a while. There's so many more messages. Ben. Let me just get on with the Betway picks of the week, the Sports Panorama Betway picks of the week. Those are uh, already on the CTFM main handle, so if you miss it, you can go out there and check it out. So there's Belgium versus Russia happening. We have over 2.5 goals in that one. <laughs> we have Cote d'Ivoire versus Niger. We have Cote d'Ivoire uh, winning straight in that one. We have Netherlands versus... We have Northern Ireland versus the Netherlands away from home. We have the Netherlands winning that one. There's South Africa versus Sudan with South Africa winning. And then there's Lesotho versus Nigeria also with Nigeria winning. For the booking code, we have 6B DA435. 6B DA435. Well, I think that's about it for today. Thank you very much to Betway, always holding us down on Sports Panorama. Thank you very much to DSTV as well. They bring us all the games. They make sure that we can sit here and make proper arguments. And then, of course, to you, the lovely listeners out there. Those of you who tweet at us, those of you who send us messages, the show is nothing without you, I tell you. Let's do this again next week. Benjamin Inketia here, Nathan Kwao, Fentio Tahiru, a.k.a. Bocho in Kegbe. Coach Christopher Nimli joined us on the phone. And then, of course, Desmond Nyako with Hans in the studio. We are out. Hopefully, there will be a repeat of this show tomorrow. And then, of course, we'll put out the um, podcast as well. So you can go out there to citysportsonline.com and listen to the repeat of this show, Sports Panorama. Take care of yourself and be safe.